Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped. Now, I've had the Mustang Mach-E here for the best part of two months now, and I've learned an awful lot about the car. And in this video, I want to talk about a subject that every time I do an EV review, it comes up in the comments. I am lucky enough to have a seven kilowatt wall box at home, my Zappi charger, to charge my car overnight. I am lucky enough to have off-street parking. Question is, what if you're not lucky enough to have your own charger? What if you don't have off-street parking? What's EV ownership gonna look like for you? Well, I reckon we take the Mackie out for a drive and have a chat because there is much to discuss. Okay, so what better place to talk about this subject than driving the Mackie? So let's go for a drive. It's gonna be a bit of a one take wonder, but I really do wanna get this off my chest. However, before we start, the one thing I do wanna talk about is I've had this car for about two months and I was starting to get really worried about the range of the car. Because as the weeks went by, the predicted range on a full charge was getting lower and lower and lower, and it was down to like 210, 215 miles. And I just couldn't understand why the car wasn't being driven around in untamed mode all the time or being driven that hard. But the predicted miles were coming down really, really badly. I thought it might be something to do with the cold weather, but it's not been that cold. And then in a video a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned something along those lines and someone said, have you reset the EV driving history? I'm like, no. So this morning I went into the main menu and you go into the charging menu and you reset EV driving history and the predicted range on a full charge is now 330 miles or just a bit more than that actually 333 miles and I'm like what's happened there I really I really don't understand it because I did a journey yesterday of about 160 miles and it didn't deplete the battery by half, it depleted the battery by like 70%. So if anybody understands anything about what's going on there, please let me know. Anyway, I wanna talk about charging and there's, there's a, a couple of drivers for this. In the UK and across a lot of Europe, we've got legislation in place that means from 2030, which isn't that long away, you are only gonna be able to buy a new electric vehicle. Now that doesn't mean to say there aren't gonna be piston cars on the road, there'll be petrol and diesel cars around for many, many years to come, I am sure of it. And I'm sure we'll end up with other synthetic fuel solutions to help us with those cars. However, if you're buying a new car, it's EV. And I guess there's a couple of things to think about there. The first barrier for many of you, and you put it in the comments all the time, is the purchase price of a new EV is, is expensive. And I know there are cheaper um, sort of lease schemes through work and you can get a whole bunch of different benefits when you buy a car, it's better for your benefit in kind on your company car, all of that kind of stuff. But I don't see that as a long-term thing. I think that's just an incentive to try and get us away from piston cars and into electric. I can't see that those benefits are going to last forever. Even having a wall box installed at home, you get a, um, a subsidy on that. I can't see that's going to last forever. So buying an electric car is, is really expensive. I guess the bottom end, you'd look at something like the new MG, which actually is brilliant value for money and no doubt a very good car, but you're often talking, you know, 40, 50, 60 thousands, maybe, maybe more than that, and that's too much for somebody. So there's an electric car used market, and then you get worries about battery longevity and, and those types of things, but you know, there are used electric car dealers. I drove past one yesterday. So Let's let's maybe have a, another discussion on another video about the barrier to entry for EVs. But the biggest challenge is once you've got an EV, it needs charging. Now, I'm going to approach this from the positive side of things. As I've said, I've already got at home a seven kilowatt wall box. I've got off street parking. So actually living with an EV is super easy. We've had this car two months. We've done a lot of miles in it and I have yet to plug it into public charging infrastructure. 
everything has been done from either my wall box at home or when I did a video on it when I drove to my friends in the Cotswolds I was lucky enough to stay with some friends and they um, had a wall box or if you go away and stay at a hotel often hotels will have a charger that you can charge your car up overnight and actually that means you very rarely use public charging infrastructure um, let me just um, go past this um, so when people talk about there not being enough public charge points, I do understand that argument, but you do need to remember that the vast majority of EV journeys will be fueled by cars that were charged at home. You wake up every morning, you've got 330 miles of range in your car, happy, happy days. And if you're on the right electric tariff, you can do that at a fraction of the price of driving a piston car or charging in public. Again, with the current energy crisis, I, my worry about these super duper off peak rates and so on, um, I, I can't see they are going to last forever either. Um, but if you've got one at the moment, happy days, you could probably put a full charge into a car like this for certainly under £10. If you're really lucky, maybe even under £5. And that makes the living with proposition amazing like really really truly amazing nearly as amazing as the beautiful colors of those trees oh wow so that's that if you fall into that category so you have the economic ability to buy an ev you have off street parking and you have a wall box at home happy days what if you don't so we've mentioned if you can't afford to buy a new ev then that's a challenge out the way oh, pheasants are so stupid but the big challenge is what if, what if you don't have off-street parking? What if you live in a flat or an apartment? Or if you live somewhere that has like a communal parking area, like a, a, an undercover garage or something, and the, the landlords or the, the, the people who run the, uh, the, the, the sort of communal areas don't either haven't got charges in there, there aren't space for them, they're not prepared to put them in. You know, if you don't have your own charging at home, you know, you could maybe traipse a cable across a, <laughs> you know, across a footpath. But honestly, Living with an EV without the ability to charge it at home, my 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 opinion on that, it would be an absolute nightmare. And if anyone if any of you does that, then please let me know what it's like. But first things first, you don't have that amazing luxury of waking up every morning and the car's full of juice and off you go, 300 miles of range, thank you very much. You wake up in the morning and think, oh, do I don't need to go and spend an hour at a public charge point to get enough range in the car for my week's commute. You need to plan that in. And then when you go to those public charge points, the amount you're paying per kilowatt is gonna be significantly more than you would pay at home. And I know that if you, with this uh, Mac E, you've got the, the Ford Blue Oval charge network, um, Kia have a similar thing, Hyundai have a similar thing, all the EV manufacturers will have deals with the various charge point infrastructure vendors. You might be paying, oh, I don't know, 30 to 40 pence per kilowatt. Now, if that, if, if you want to do the maths on that one, this car, let's say it's got a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is just a bit shy of that, you know, at 30 pence per kilowatt, zero to 100% charge is going to cost you 30 pounds. That, that's how you, again, some people say, can you debunk all the numbers, the different numbers? Well, they're actually not nearly as difficult as, as we think, but there's another stupid pheasant here, look. But that, that is going to cost you to run that car. And if you don't have one of those charge network deals and you were to go to someone like an Instavolt or one of these high speed chargers, you could be paying 40, 50, 60 pence per kilowatt. So a 100 kilowatt battery from zero is going to cost you 60 pounds. 60 pounds for 250 miles. Now, now you're, not, you're not any cheaper than running a piston car, really, especially if it's a diesel one. And I think that's a real problem. And I'm not so sure that the government have got, well, I don't think the government have got a handle on very much at the moment, but it's something that we're just not talking about is, is you know, those of us that cannot charge at home, that's a big problem. Then you put into the mix the um, uh, drivers with limited mobility. I often get the point about, can you use public charge infrastructure if you're a wheelchair user, for example? Well my experience on most of them probably with the exception of the grid serve places i've been to recently there's no way you're gonna be able to plug into a very narrow bay and charge your car if you're in a wheelchair it would be a nightmare so that throws into the mix another complication so 
it, it starts for me it starts to become a real challenge <clears throat> and then another thing and I know I'm rambling on here but I'm trying in my head to get all of the points I wanted to get out in this video is let's go back to me having a wall box at home happy days so I live in a development of six houses and I am currently the only user of an electric car and I'm the only one with a seven kilowatt wall box if all of my neighbors decided they wanted to run electric cars and they all put wall boxes in there's a huge impact on the electricity supply infrastructure that delivers the electric to my house and if you multiplied that on a typical domestic you know on a nice uh, road you know with I don't know 30 or 40 houses on it at the moment if you went down that road and counted the number of wall boxes you're probably looking at I don't know five or ten percent something like that it's increasing month on month I know but the challenges for the electricity supply companies if all 30 houses had a wall box and they all had a car plugged in that's a nightmare I mean that's an almost I'm not an electrician but I know a couple of electricians who've tried to describe this problem to me that's a problem that means that it doesn't work now, there's the other one that often people get thrown in, or what about the generation of electricity through, um, you know, uh, uh, well, we have a dependency still on fossil fuels in the UK, but we've got more renewables, we've got a lot of wind, we've got a lot of solar, we've still got nuclear. And, you know, the, if we all moved all of our cars to electric, what would that do for the electricity supply in each country we live in? I don't think that problem's nearly as bad as many people work out. Uh, or, or make out but but it's not great maybe I should talk to him because he's from the Scottish and he's from the electric board let's go and ask him so but but that's still a problem you know we need to kind of uh, to do that and then the final biggest elephant in the room and I've mentioned this on videos before is when I put fuel in my car be that petrol or diesel there's a very large percentage of that is tax and the government makes a lot of revenue from taxation on petrol and diesel. If I'm now not putting petrol or diesel in my car, but I'm putting electrons in my car, where's that revenue gonna come from? And I tell you now, it's gonna come from your electric. So you, we're gonna find, and it might not be the case yet, and again, if you live in countries where this is the case, put it in the comments, I'd love to get a debate going on this one. But we're going to get to a point where that loss in revenue from fossil fuels like petrol and diesel is going to be, have to be made up somewhere. And at the moment, it's all giveaways to get you into electric. There's, you know, there's incentives to get you into electric. But once you're there, I can put money on the fact that taxation on electricity is going to go up. And, and you know, company car tax at the moment, you don't pay company car tax. Well, you know, but if it's a hybrid, it's very low benefit in kind. If it's electric, it's hardly anything, if anything at all. Well, that's not going to be the case forever because that tax has got to come from somewhere. So I've just got this horrible feeling that in 2030 or probably 2033, 2040, we're going to be in a very different place than we are today. And that's what we're not talking about. And the cars are great. This Mustang Mach-E is great. Um, this video is not about the Mach-E. I absolutely love this car. Um, and now actually I've reset the now I've reset the range history and it's delivering 300 miles of range on a charge bearing in mind this is the extended range version that's much better I'm much happier oh RSE Tron GT <laughs> he was giving it some you can do that in the wet in one of them so what do you think please put in the comments below your thoughts on this I I, I didn't know how I was going to format this video <clears throat> the, I, it was a kind of combination of lots of different comments on videos that I've done recently and I thought I'd just go out and have a chat and I try and get all of the different points all out in one video in one take in one conversation with some mates down the pub they are my thoughts and I, I honestly if if for me you fall, you'll fall in one of two camps if you have off-street parking and the ability to have your own charger at home living with an EV actually most of the time you don't need charging infrastructure for us if to this car 100 or 300 miles of range if the round trip is less than that you don't worry about having to charge in public and if one way is nearly that all you need to do is make sure you can charge at your destination charge up and come back the next day 
and 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 therefore you don't really have to plan in um, a, a charge stop. What you do need to do is make sure you've always got charge in the car for those emergencies, for those oh no, I, you know, suddenly you get a phone call and you have to drive 100 miles somewhere, and if your car is only at you know 20 miles of charge because you forgot to plug it in last night and and you were you you were playing you know range anxiety bingo, you you're screwed basically unless you've got another vehicle. If your car journey is longer than that range, then clearly you need to start thinking about using charging infrastructure. But if you have have charging at home, living with an EV is like super simple, probably saves you an absolute fortune and you just don't need to visit garages. If you don't fall into that camp, honestly, living with an EV is a real problem and a, a real problem that no one's talking about um, and I think we should, and I think we should start a bit of a debate. You know, we're seeing councils putting charges on things like lampposts and more and more street level charging. But that, you know, if you live in a block of flats with 20 people in it and you've all got a car with a car park downstairs in a parking space, you need 20 charges, one in each parking space. Otherwise, it's a nightmare. And to live with an electric car and charge on public charging infrastructure, it's not that it can't be done, but it's a nightmare and it's going to cost you way more than having a car if you can charge at home and probably not dissimilar to if you've got a piston you know a petrol or diesel car anyway i've been rambling on enough no idea how long this video is but please put in the comments below what your thoughts are on this one if you enjoyed this video if you'd like me to do a video debunking some of the numbers i often talk about things like miles per kilowatt hour or speed of charging or size of battery packs i can do a video on that if you'd like let me know otherwise if you enjoyed this one give me a thumbs up comments below are always welcome and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to petrol bed for plenty more content to come and i'll see you on the next film guys you take care drive safe